So hey guys and welcome back to the layout. It's been about three or four weeks I believe since I made an update. Sorry about that. Just had a few exams. Got my greens or my green license, provisional license, whatever you want to call it. I just finished today, so as I posted a bulletin yesterday, I'd be making a little movie, but well, kind of like a YouTube marathon, I guess. So I got the whole month of July off, so hopefully, and then tomorrow we're going to the hobby shop, so I might show you what I buy after that, depending on my budget. We'll see about that. See, so yeah, just a 25 running, which is a small good strain. Looks pretty good. Nice and smooth run, and most of you guys have probably seen before. And yeah, sorry for the shaking, I can really see I'm shaking, but we'll get into the update. So I believe it was last weekend or the weekend, no, the weekend before that, I believe it was an Epping train show. It had a really, really good second hand store. Like, I picked up a few bargains as I'm showing you now. But starting off with this one, I believe I paid about seven or eight dollars for that one. And these were about eight or nine dollars each, these three here. They're really nice, the only thing is it uses those uh, lifelike couples I believe, so I might have to convert them to the, the, to the knuckle couples if I can, but for 7 or $8, they, <laughs> seriously, they're not bad at all. For a bit of weathering if I want later on or something similar, especially these trees here, they're a good buy. But as you guys know, second hand does have a real, real big risk. So I also bought these two just for the sake of it. They said they were working good condition, so just well, as soon as you pop on the track, mind well, you, it's all quote 100 tracks, so it shouldn't really have a problem. Just look at that, just bump straight off. So, the money I basically saved can have cancelled out, but I don't really mind. I can always fix these, but the main thing I'm using these things are for. The main thing I'm using these for is just for testing, so I can always just convert it to like a abandoned car, like a carriage or something, along a station or something similar. This one doesn't run too bad, but it has similar problems, it just bounces up and down. So yeah, the Epic Shows was pretty good actually, I, I would recommend it to anyone just starting the hobby and all that, so I already had that one, I already had that one. I got this one as well. I just need to get the top load for it, which I will pick up tomorrow as well. That one's not bad, I actually like that one as well. So now coming into the back junction, to tell you the truth, I have finished it at last. Well, kind of. So your three main lines are all done, except for that power track. I got the replacement track, so I'm just going to head over there and show you. So it's all been laid down. Got my Santa Fe just sitting there. So this track here, it's normal standard straight. I was actually surprised it fit in perfectly, so that'll normally just sit in right there instead of that ugly Hornby connector. I don't really like them, they stand out, it's not realistic to me, but for testing and all that, it does the job. So I'll just step back a bit. So right now, this junction looks just about done. So coming off the outer loop main line, got an express point. So you have to use a bit of flexi, so the set track ends about here. Yep, here it is, ends this there. So this is all flexi. It's approximately as close to third race. It's getting there. So it's about, it goes to about second around this bit here. I'm still getting used to using curves flexi tracks. I don't like it, but I have to use it then, of course. And then you got your express point. I placed that the most suitable section and then just a bit of flexi strain of the track out and then and then I work my geometry skills basically or kinda and then I thought well I had, I had this junction already ready so I thought how would I use the rest of the space the best of the like the most complicated, not most complicated, the most realistic I could think of with that little space, I wanted it to go to the right to go the opposite direction, so a point coming out from here and then going like that. But then I looked at the tight space and I'm like, no, it wouldn't really suit the space. So I decided to use all left handed, so in that little space, there's, I believe there is two, four, six, there's <laughs> eight left handers. I think all my left handers I had, and I have to actually replace a few. Which brings another topic, guys. When you're buying new points, 
I'd recommend Pico over Hornby any day. There's this point right there, right there, that's a Hornby point right there. Look at that. No contacts there whatsoever. So I'm going to to chuck that point in the bin tomorrow as soon as I get my new point. Compared to these Hornby, uh, these Pico ones, sorry, these Pico ones, stunning. Spring, I reckon, will have a longer lifetime. It's the first time I ever used these Pico ones. And to tell you the truth, they're a lot cheaper as well. I save, I think, every 10 points I buy, I basically get a free Pico one. So I saved, I saved a good amount of money just switching to Pico. I don't know, Hornby's a bit overrated these days. The quality isn't coming out as they used to be. So just got to finish up this siding. It's going to go all the way to the end like the other one. And i got to cut that one a bit. And the siding's going to back up onto itself and split it down here. So two tracks, like a little engine shed. Not quite, won't really be an engine shed, but basically I want to fit one British shunter and one American shunter on this side here. And then maybe like oh, one of my steam locus or something sitting on the smaller side, which will easily fit there. Plenty of room, and I already got the point for that. I just gotta finally tack that section down. And over here, this is coming out pretty, pretty good. I'm just, I'm not really tacking this area down so soon, and not until I get an industry. So there's no point tacking it down, and I have to remove the track and then fix it up for my industry. So that's just there for temporary, and I'm just testing it out. And trains do work there, except for that point right there. The trains just trip over that point, so. So it basically trips over and then creates a short circuit over here, which really annoys me because that beeping sound from the system, I don't know if it's a safety thing, but it really, really ticks me off. As you guys, I just got some carriages sitting there, so you, there's a point sitting under that carriage there, which leads out to a similar thing over here, but all of it will just lead out straight here, so maybe an engine could be refueling on this side and then maybe something small on this side, I'm not sure yet, depending on my budget. and. Then, done a bit of work on this side. The only thing is this is first radius. You're probably thinking why have you used first radius? Well, if you think about it, fourth, third, second. If I go if I do second on that one I'd be literally sitting against that track here. So this track I'd literally be sitting so close to the edge over there so and I don't really mind using first radius only because mainly only engines will be heading to the that side. And these days all engines as long as your tracks joints are nice and good which most of them are, but I'm thinking of using flexi track over there after I get some streamline track because they're a lot better for the curves. That way it's like one of they probably they end up being about two pieces, but instead of having about eight pieces where I think it is at the moment, it's always better to have less joints. I don't know if you guys have heard that one before, but the less joints you have, the less chance of the train's going to derail because these days trains derail um, on the small gaps that you have so. And if you don't it, clip it, clip in the two tracks together, but you get a little bit of a bump, so that's not always good. So on this side here, as you can see, the track comes all the way around. And I have this curve point for a while. I was thinking, where can I use it? But it fits nice over there, so I might be moving it up a bit so it's nice and flush. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's not really straight. So I was gonna flick points out. The points on this way wouldn't really line up and all that, so I still got to work that out. So I'm probably going to use streamline flexi track right there for that reason. That way I can align that point nice and easily. And then this section here will be the station terminus. So only maybe one or two trains will be stuck there because of that first radius. But I highly doubt it these days. I've seen trains run on tighter radius than that, so I shouldn't have a problem. But overall. Everything's coming along well. I'm starting to tack down everything today and tomorrow. And I'm going to probably start wiring it up so I can test all three loops. As you can see, I can only get power to one loop at a time, mainly because of these insulated these insulated joiners right here, so the wiring of this one, which I'll get to maybe a couple of days when I get my wiring done. But this video is coming to an end. It's about nine minutes long already, so I better conclude it before... YouTube doesn't let me use it, so if you guys enjoyed, subscribe and all that. And yeah, video up tomorrow, see what I get tomorrow from the hobby store. Alright guys, talk to you later.